Hey there guys, what we're going to do today is we're going to take and rebuild this water pump. Now this is for a um, 59, but this process basically works on all the um, uh, 331 series of V8 engines. First thing we're going to do is we need to make sure that when we put everything back together, we get this flange in the same same location. So I'm going to pick a spot here by the by the vent. I'm going to measure, and I see that the this surface of the flange where the fan would and pulley would mount is two and a quarter inches. I'm just going to write that down on my on my bench um, because of variations in the castings, depending on uh, uh, if you have air conditioning or not. This could be different. So for whatever unit you have, take a measurement to a reference point on the housing so you can press this flange back in the correct location. So the first order of business is going to be to take the cover plate off the back. It has these five screws. Now what you'll notice on these is that there's a um, copper or aluminum uh, sealing washer. That's not a part that's available in our kit. But um, a lot of hardware stores have them. Or you can simply, like what we're going to do today, we're going to put some um, thread sealer on the threads so that we don't get water leaking through around the bolts. So once we get the cover off, what we need to do is get this impeller off the, off the shaft. What I found helps to, do, to get this to, to move is there's a seal behind it, spring-loaded seal behind it. We can push this on the shaft a little bit more. And it, by pushing it on with the press, we can kind of break the rust free so it's easier to pull it off with our improvised puller. It's, we don't have the, um, the special Cadillac tool that fits in here to pull. What I generally try to do is to try to get some threads in here and pull it out with a, with a like a steering wheel puller. They come out, some of them come out easy, some of them don't. Worst case scenario, we don't we don't use this shaft, we don't use this impeller. You in there with, it, with an angle grinder and, and, and go to town on it, as long as you don't damage the housing. So let's get this over into the press and we'll push this in a little bit to try to break, it, break the rust free and we'll take it over the workbench and, and try to pull it off. What we're looking for here is just to see that impeller just move a little tiny bit. Okay, move just a little bit. So hopefully that'll help us get it pulled, be able to pull it off. Now if you have the proper tool, the Cadillac tool that, that fits in here, you can do that. Basically whatever method you can use to get this apart in here, uh, use. I mean, it depends on how rusted it is and what sort of condition it's in. So let's get this over on the other bench into the device. So what I'm going to try to do is uh, drill a couple holes in here and tap them and see if we can bolt a puller onto here. Like I say, everything here can be sacrificed. All we're concerned about is uh, maintaining the housing. Like I say, this is one of those things that can go very, very easily or very, very difficult. We'll put some threads in these holes. You have the Cadillac tool. Love to see some good close-up pictures of it. Maybe it'd show people what they needed to do to be able to grind a uh, set of jaws on a commercially available puller. To be able to make, make the Cadillac style one. So if you happen to have one, it'd be really great if you could post some pictures online. Okay, here we go. And it's coming up. Turn that around. Watch right in there. And it's slightly off center there.
Just getting every, making sure everything is centered properly. There we go. The impeller is off. And there's the seal. See how it's spring loaded. Like I say, that's what allowed us to be able to push that impeller down just a little bit more to break the rust free. So the next step is back over to the hydraulic press. So what we want to do here is we need to push the um, uh, bearing out of the housing. So we're going to push against this shaft and hopefully the bearing is not so bad that it comes apart and then, then you've got some problems. So because the bearing is in the housing, we need to support the housing while we push on this into the shaft. So I've got the press set up here. Slip this in, get everything lined up. And we gotta bring that ram down quite a ways. If that's going to be enough to let us press this out the rest of the way. Standing back for when it does that. So now we have our housing with the bearing uh, pushed out. We reach down here and there's the old unit. So now we need to do some cleaning up on here. We want to make sure this is in good shape in here so that the, uh, there's not rust and corrosion in there. We want to clean out the vent hole here and clean up this surface here where we're going to seal with the gasket and then this surface right here is very important to have be clean and smooth so we'll polish that up a little bit too now what we're going to do is we got some scotch bright here we're going to go in and start cleaning up these surfaces let me get this cleaned up in here let me get this cleaned up around the edge a pretty good surface for that seal to work on and we'll come in where the bearing goes clean that up make sure there's no burrs okay this feels pretty good now our next step is to go back to the press we got our new bearing we go in this direction I made a little tool on the lathe we need to push on here don't push here. I'm going to push in, in this section. Probably find a socket that'll work. Or you can turn down the scrap piece of stainless in the bin. So I made a little tool that fits over the shaft. Fits into the housing. So this should let us press this bearing in without any trouble at all. So let's go back over to the other side of the shop to the press. Now I, before we press this in, I'm going to take and just apply a little bit of grease just so it doesn't gall as it's being pressed in. There it goes. And how this feels going in and looking at the pressure on the gauge, it feels right. It's a hard thing to describe. So what are we about? One and a half, approaching two tons on the press as it's finding its way home. You can see it's not, not giving me a fight. So we're getting close to it bottoming out. 
And I think we're there. There we go. Let's now seat it in there where we want it. So the next thing we can do is we can go ahead and install the, um, the, the fan pulley on here. So once again, I'm gonna put a little, little bit of grease there. And what we need to look at is we got to back up the shaft because now we're gonna be, we just push the bearing housing into the water pump housing. Now we're gonna push on the center shaft. So we need to get, find an appropriate a spacer that will support that. We've got all sorts of things to choose from here. Looks like that'll probably do the job. Yep. That's gonna go that direction. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm just gonna try to get it started. And then once the ram almost bottoms out on the shaft, then we'll take our ruler and take our measurements and press and use our tool here to press it home. Okay, now we've bottomed out the ram. There with this. Get some pressure on it so it can hold itself in the... Centered. go. So now we have this side done. The flange is in the same relationship to the housing for where the, the pulley will go on, the, uh, the fan and the pulley. Next thing we need to do is get ready to um, install the seal and the impeller. So this is the seal that we use. This is the surface that goes against the um, housing. And this surface uh, mates with that surface on the impeller. What I'm gonna do, put a tiny bit of lubrication on the shaft and on that sealing surface. If you have water pump grease around, it'd be ideal to use for this. We just don't want this to, to burn up initially. So we push that on. Just like that. And then the impeller is going to go on. And what we want is between the back of the impeller and this housing to be five to ten thousandths of clearance. Slide this in. You can use a straight edge and a feeler gauge. Or be like me and use your calibrated eye. And that looks good. So now we've got the impeller on the shaft with its new seal. Turns nice and free. Apply some, uh, some sealer here. I always like to use a little bit of the old fashioned sealers. I don't like to use silicone. Use whatever old fashioned type of stuff you got. Anything to kind of help hold the gasket in place for you. There 
Here's the housing gasket. Line that up. Stick it in place. Now I've got some new screws or bolts here. Um, and some lock washers. If you can find replacement uh, copper or aluminum washers, go right ahead and use those. That would be the best thing. We don't have those available, so I'm gonna use some uh, thread sealant. This is the real thick, goopy stuff. So I like for, good for head bolts and water pump bolts where they go into the um, water passages. So, get one started. Of course, we've just done this for um, demonstration today. When you have the housing stripped of the old bearing, you know, that's your time if you got a sandblaster to sandblast it and clean everything up nice. Uh, maybe put a coat of paint on it. But this is just to show you the mechanics of the actual replacement of the, of the bearing and impeller and pulley flange. Snug them up and kind of tighten them in a pattern like you would lug nuts. So we've taken an old bound up rusty water pump and made it serviceable. If you just had an old car that was a driver, you wouldn't need to do much more than this. Trying to fix one up so it's for show quality. Sandblast it, paint it, make it all look nice. But what we've got here is a serviceable water pump and you know the details of installing all the new parts. So if you need to rebuild your water pump, we have several different kits available for different years. Pretty much a similar job for all of them. You always refer to your service manual. So if you need a, a water pump kit, uh, just Check in the links below in the description. At Caddy Daddy Presents, it's all about giving back. Please enjoy the video of the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Helena and Calistoga. Clicking the link in the video description.